Hello! Today we're going to scope Starfire from Team Titans. Even though I've never watched the show myself, I really liked her design, so I wanted to create my own version of her. By pulling down and back from the base sphere, I can quickly create the head shape. The eyes are always the anchor of the face for me, so I carve out some eye holes, which help me place the nose and mouth in the right position. Now I can carve into the mouth bump to separate the two lips and draw the outline before making them round and juicy. A few quick brush strokes later, with the crease brush, the nose as well as the chin is taking shape. After adding a bit more fat to the cheek, it was time for the eyes. I already have the holes, so now I can put the eyeballs and afterwards cover them with the eyelids. To finish the face, I add the fat pad above the eyes. As you can see, smell and taste, so the last thing that's missing are the ears. After outlining the general shape with a mask, I can pull out the ear and give it that good old eerie shape with the crease brush. Sometimes I use a base mesh for the body, but this time I decided that I won't let myself have time to do anything else over the weekend and blocked out the body with some basic subdivided cubes. She's going to be 7.5 heads tall, which means that the upper half of my 8 head scale is going to be the head and core of the body. The legs and feet take up the lower half, which I can also block out with some subdivided cubes. Usually I put the body together with only spheres, but this time I wanted to see if I can create a good block out by using fewer objects and shaping the cubes a bit more. This was surprisingly effective, so I'm probably going to always do it like this from now on. Here's a quick rule for arms. They reach down to the crotch and are split in the middle into the fore and back, I mean upper arm. The hand is a whole complex body in itself and I'm still not comfortable sculpting them, but what I can tell you is that they have four fingers and a thumb. Luckily I only have to sculpt one of them because I can just use a mirror modifier for the other side. With the big shapes blocked out I can now join all the objects together and refine them. My good friend the crease brush helps me draw the individual muscles of her body and with my good dear friend the clay strips brush I can give them more volume and shape. And if that isn't enough I can use the grab brush to push and pull the muscles until I think they look acceptable. I want to make her quite fit but not too muscular so I have to find a good mix between defining the muscles and smoothing them out too much to where she looks too skinny. I actually kept the hands separated because they need more geometry than the body. So after refining the body I try my best to turn these sausages into some actual fingers. I would say I was moderately successful. Carving out the eyeball block out lets me place actual eyeballs into her head and after refining the face just a tiny bit more she's looking pretty good. To go further I need to optimize her geometry. For that I can use two of my base meshes, one for the head and one for the body. The add-on soft wrap lets me pin these base meshes to her body and after doing that for all the necessary spots it wraps the new meshes around the sculpt. This way I can transfer the shape of her body to this new model with better geometry. I recently discovered that you can automatically rig your characters with Mixamo, so I uploaded my mesh and there you go. It may not be perfect, but it's good enough. Now I can finally move her from this awfully unnatural looking A pose into something that hopefully looks a bit more natural. Speaking about natural, the rig creates some rather unnatural deformations, but I can fix those with a little bit of sculpting. I wasn't that happy with the first pose, so I created two more and I actually like the third one the most, so I went with that one. With the final pose setup, I can now adjust some muscles to actually make them react to the movement of the limbs. So I shortened the biceps on one side and showed her abs a bit more. For her boots, I can just duplicate the geometry of her legs and scale it up a bit. Now is also a great time to color code all the different pieces of the model. This way they're easier to distinguish and I can define the basic color scheme. The rest of the outfit I had to model myself, which means laying new geometry on top of her body and fixing areas where the two objects intersect. And to finalize it, I go into sculpt mode and add these small folds that make the cloth just a bit more realistic. To add her luscious fiery hair, I first add a new sphere in her head. And now I can use the snake hook brush to create the basic shape for the hairstyle. I want to make sure that the hair is dynamic and is very visible in the final shot. Because that is, you know, one of her defining characteristics. The strips of the clay strips brush are great to create a nice hair flow, which turns this hair blob more into a hairstyle. I separated the big blob into smaller and smaller strands until I have enough to get the look across that I wanted to go for. For the eyebrows, I can duplicate part of her forehead and use that to block them out. 
The shape of eyebrows and lashes doesn't change that much, so I grab some from an old project and adjust them so they fit onto her. Just like the eyebrows, I can copy the settings for the hair from an old project. I like to keep the hair separated from the actual body, so I'll duplicate the geometry of the scalp and start adding the hair strands on there. Slowly but surely, I like to add one patch of hair after another to create the skull block out. Working from the bottom to the top makes it quite easy to layer the strands on top of each other without the old ones obstructing my vision. Once I've covered the whole head, I separate the big strands into smaller strands to make the hairstyle look a bit more natural. You could work for ages on a hairstyle, creating smaller and smaller strands, but my time was almost over, so I went on to add some shorter strands that fill up the hairline and finish off the hairstyle. To finally add some color to her, I start with a face scan texture, and look at that, her face doesn't look so weird anymore. I can now customize the different aspects of her skin, like the glossiness and subsurface scattering, before I copy the skin texture from her face all over her body, so that the body also has, you know, a skin texture. While I'm already working on her face, I also give her a proper facial expression instead of this bored Instagram model look. And to finish on, I mean, off her face, I give her a brown eyeshadow and eyeliner. For the clothes, I like to look through my collection of cloth textures to find one that would fit her. I also like to add some other random textures to bring some variation into the clothes to once again make them look more natural. To finish it all off, I'll turn on the glowiness for the glowy bits and light the scene for the final shots. 